Hey guys, Lector here to once again tell you about another Overwatch League 2019 expansion team and today I'm going to be telling you all about the Atlanta Reign. So let's start off in the tank line, it's going to be Pokepo and Daco that have been selected for the Atlanta Reign, previously working together on Element Mystic, they're one of the more solid tank duos coming as a pair that have been recruited into Overwatch League 2019. Daco in particular gained fame and notoriety across Korea as being one of the most fearsome divas that anyone could face up against. And Pokepo, well, he's a pretty meta resistant tank and that's a big deal. Like, we talk about a lot of other tanks like Reinhardt Specialist or Winston Specialist, but Pokepo has both for Winston and for Reinhardt. And crucially, he also has a really good Orisa as well. So no matter what meta is thrown away of Atlanta Rain, their tank line will be able to deal with it. And it's important that I say tank duo there. In Stage 1 of the Overwatch League in 2018, all five of the top five teams in the Stage 1 standings did come with what we'd say like pre-assembled tank players, people who had synergy with each other before Overwatch League. And having that early tank synergy can be a boon in these first stages, and that's exactly what Atlanta Rain are going to be having. And also, we cannot forget that the Contenders Career ecosystem is a great proving grounds for players on lands. And so we have their entire group stage and playoffs in that land environment. It does mean that both Pogpo and Daco will not be choking in front of the crowd, they will be thoroughly prepared to be playing in the Blizzard Arena with Atlanta Rain. But while I have sung praises as well, there are still a few concerns regarding the tank line of Atlanta Rain. The first would be that, well, Element Mystic didn't really claim any major titles with these two at the helm of the tank line. They always had incredibly incre impressive group stages and contenders and other tournaments, but when it came to playoffs, they're always rather lackluster in terms of their performance. And also, Atlanta Rain is basically multilingual as far as teams go we've got a couple of western players and of course a couple of korean players as well this tank duo along with ursta so you've got to wonder to what degree effective communication will be available especially in more communication heavy compositions like dive where you're talking about a lot of different locations to try and coordinate those attacks overall if they don't choke in playoffs, as seems to have been the theme of Element Mystic, Popo and Daco will be one of the greatest assets acquired by any team across all of Overwatch League 2019, and they will be a fearsome force for Atlanta Reign. Okay, moving on to DPS, Atlanta Reign have procured three for their roster. They have Ursta of Lucky Future Zenith, they have Nalar of Last Night's Leftovers, and finally Defran of No Fixed Abode, but quite a bit of Infamy. I'm going to focus on who many would presume to be the starting pair of DPS, Ursta and Defran. Ursta, he's incredibly impressive. He's a two-time Contenders China champion with Lucky Future Zenith, and he has a huge hero pool to back that up. A load of projectile DPS alongside Tracer as well, so we can assume that he may well decide to be playing with Brigitte in a 3-3 composition if that's exactly what Atlanta Rain want to run during Stage 1. And if Ursta gets for Brigitte, that leaves Defran and his superior tracking ability, courtesy of the Soldier 76 and the Tracer, to be playing on the Zarya. And both of these DPS, they will have a lot of knowledge of how to sort of temper their gameplay and their aggression regarding how many resources they have applied to them. So they could be pretty good assets to be slotting into a 3-3 where Defran can kind of temper his aggression depending on what shields he has available, how much charge, etc. Well trained by Tracer for such gameplay, but we do know that this, this DPS line from Atlanta Rain is probably going to be far more likely to thrive in a meta where they can actually flex those hero picks. So in both hitscan and projectile DPS talent, Atlanta Rain definitely have a pretty potent pairing, and they do have the third part of the story. They have Nalar as their Widow Specialist, should it be required in a future meta, because often in DPS-based metas, the Widowmaker can be incredibly important, so that's why their head coach decided to pick up Nalar as well. But for all the talent that this trio do have, I do have some reservations. The first, of course, being once again communication. Ursta, being a Korean DPS talent, may have a few communication issues with their Western backline, as well as the Western co-DPS in Defran. Speaking of Defran, he has been absent from professional play for quite a while now. He has been streaming quite consistently, and to uh, quite a few people, he's been incredibly popular because of the mechanical skill he does possess, but... How will his comms be in a team? How will his mentality be? Defran is a notoriously potentially unstable individual, not exactly the beacon of stability that Atlanta Rain may need for a long season with ups and downs, because you're often going to have some teething troubles as a new roster. Let's talk supports. Atlanta Rain have decided to recruit two rising European talents, Massar of Finland and formerly Team Giganti, and the German Kodak, formerly of Six Snakes and 
Team Germany. Both of them, they've had pretty impressive careers as main and flex support respectively, and I imagine they are going to be a pretty potent backline, but the question is, will they be Overwatch League caliber, and will they be able to communicate effectively with their tank frontline, which basically speak Korean? Of course, there will be some overlap in terms of language, which will facilitate communication, especially in 3-3, when you basically just sort of call out your speed boost and your discords, and you only have to communicate with your other support player regarding what kind of ultimate sort of rotation you want to use to try and avert incoming damage and danger. Some good news however is that Atlanta Reign support line is definitely very meta resistant. Kodak has both a fantastic Lucio and an Ana, whereas Massar definitely not limited either to the Lucio or the Mercy. Both of those incredibly good heroes for him and also he can aim so he can pick up the Zenyatta or the Ana should it be required for some double flex support compositions on places such as Dorado, Watchpoint Gibraltar or assault maps like Hanuma or Volskaya where you often will want to run the double flex supports down long sightlines to deliver both long range healing and damage from a relatively safe position. One of my concerns however for this pair will be that neither Kodak nor Masar seem to have a huge wealth of LAN experience, so playing at the Overwatch Arena may not come to them straight away. Of course, over the course of the uh, next few stages, every player will grow into the LAN environment, but very few opportunities have been offered for these two players over the last year in order to go and attend those LANs for Overwatch events and be able to prove what they have. Massad did have the opportunity to play in Poland for the Overwatch Contenders Europe and North America Season 1 Grand Finals in Krakow, coming second in a nail-biting 3-4 loss against British Hurricanes. So a pretty good result, but still not the win that he would have been hoping for. And Kodak's recently had some LAN experience playing in Paris for Team Germany. And of course, there is always the wild card, but both of these supports have thus far only proven themselves as formidable in Tier 2 competition, so we're not really sure how they will stack up against the Tier 1 talent that has existed in Overwatch League for the last year, and will have very much got used to playing in the Overwatch League arena, and had access to really important coaching resources for the best part of a year and a half now, so it's going to be a lot of catching up to do for these guys. My final points are going to relate to the coaching staff of Atlanta Reign, and let's start by talking about their head coach, Sefi. Formerly of the San Francisco shock, it would, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's too unfair to say that the inaugural San Francisco shock roster was a little bit wanting. They banked on having underage players like Sinatra and Super grow into the roster, but it did mean that they weren't quite as powerful as they would like at the beginning of stage one, and they picked a rather inexperienced tank for Winston in Nomi, who turned out to be rather disappointing off of the Reinhardt, as well as hoping that Nevix could flex onto D.Va instead of just picking up an inherent D.Va player. So instead, this time, Sefi has gone what I would consider a far more effective route of picking up a tank duo who are pre-synergized to each other and ready to play in any meta that may come their way. They also haven't gone for any underage players in their signing, so they decided that they want to be at full strength from game one with an entirely available roster. And then there's the trio of fresh blood, Silence, Kasores, and Danny. Kasores and Danny, reasonably well known in the European contender scene, Kasores having been a coach for one point, he made a quite an impressive run as an unsigned team into the playoffs. Silence worked with last night's leftovers in North American contenders, and he managed to also coach them against academy teams to make their own playoff run. Finally, Danny has done some stuff for Team Canada as an analyst, and also a little bit here and there for Angry Titans, one of the main sponsored teams one of the most formidable teams as well in European contenders, so there's definitely a lot of talent here, but thus far haven't been given too many opportunities to prove themselves on a tier 1 stage, and they're going to be giving it their all to make sure that they are valued by the end of stage 1 of the Overwatch League. So overall, when it comes to predicting the performance of Atlanta Reign during stage 1, I'd say they have a very good chance of doing incredibly well based off the back of that pre-established tank synergy that Popo and Daco are bringing to the table. Sethi realized the mistake that he made with San Francisco Shock, and trying to basically mangle together a tank line which wasn't really going to work. This time, he knows exactly what he's doing. Element Mystic's tank line is fantastic, and hopefully they will be useful in the forthcoming stages. Of course, we likely will start off in a 3-3 meta, which is going to be incredibly reliant on the communication that Pokepo and Daco can have with Defran on the Zion, Ursta on the Brigitte. The Koreans to Koreans should not be a problem, but... Defran to Pokepo when it comes to using those Zaya Bubbles on the Reinhardt, that's going to be potentially a sticking point when it comes to the strategy of Atlanta Reign and trying to make sure those communications are effective. Though with the flexible DPS specializations of Ursta and Defran, along with the pretty unique compositional brain of Gator, their two-way main tank who remains on the roster, then I do believe that when new messes come around at the start of new stages, Atlanta Reign will be one of the teams that really comes out ahead early. 
may well be caught up to later in the stages, but Imbio's initial games could be incredibly fearsome because of the versatility of Popo and Dako along with Dafran and Dursto. With Gator being able to spearhead compositional studies, may well prove to be quite a fearsome force. Anyway guys, that was a very quick overview of the Atlanta Reign as they start the 2019 season, as well as a couple of my predictions regarding how they are going to do in the early parts of the 2019 season. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave me a like and subscribe to the channel, and also follow me on Twitter at LegDayGaming. I will see you all later on in the year when I start my analysis when the season starts properly. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.